welcome back to another episode of Shaka Shaka. I don't know why I say it like that, but welcome back to Shaka Shaka. I'm your host, Queen Book, and that gentleman over there that's drinking the Coke is... Bueller. Bueller. Guys, actually introduce all of yourselves. I don't want to do it for you, so go. Halima. Kareem. Iman. Zainab. Samatar. All right, so we're back for another episode of Shaka Shaka. Just a heads up, everybody. Uh, this is going to be our last episode, and then there's going to be Ramadan, and then we're going to come back. So do your thing, get your prayers in, your du'as, tahajjir, tarawih, you know, get your Quran status up, do whatever you got to do, and then we will be back to our ratchetness. May God forgive us. Uh, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um, all right, so we have a... You okay if you're No, I'm not good. I'm not well. Um, all right, so we're uh, back with another episode. We're going to start off with a little positivity because we always start off with negativity, I think. So we want to be positive okay. once in a while when there's something to be positive about. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to start off with another... Sec- We've done this a couple of times in the past and we're going to do it again. Somali Excellence. And this time around, it goes out to a shout out to Wesson Shire. Now, Wesson Shire is a award-winning poet. She was just on a project by none other Beyonce on her sixth studio album, Mm -hmm. Lemonade. The 28-year-old poet behind Beyonce's words in Lemonade. I tried to change, closed my mouth more, tried to be softer, prettier, less awake. One of the most powerful aspects of Beyonce's deeply personal 12-track visual album Lemonade is the spoken word. While spoken by Beyonce, many of those words come from the poetry of Warson Shire. Excerpts from Warson's poems, including Women Who Are Difficult to Love and Nail Technician as Palm Reader, are featured as interludes between songs. The nail technician pushes my cuticles back, turns my hand over, stretches the skin on my palm and says, I see your daughters and their daughters. Warson was born in Kenya to parents from Somalia and grew up in London. The Somali British poet writes about being an immigrant and not ever truly fitting in. She documents stories of identity, trauma, and assimilation, topics that dovetail perfectly with Beyonce's emotional album. In 2011, Warson released Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth, a collection of partially autobiographical poems about a first-generation woman finding herself while reconciling her past and present. Warson was named the Young Poet Laureate of London in 2014, the same year she was named Queensland, Australia's Poet in Residence. Uh, so shout out to Warson Shire. My favorite line, by the way, from the album, now actually uh, it was a visual album, so from HBO, the, the segment that they did was, perhaps the problem is not the intensity of your love, but the quality of the people you love. Mm. I don't know if that resonates with you guys. Bars. <laughs> <I didn't know. laughs> Bars. <laughs> but it actually hit home for me. And uh, so shout out to What's Up Shade. Because she does poetry, we're going to give her a nice little finger snap. All right. Um, so Somali Excellence, congratulations to her. But there's always beef, right? There's positivity, there's negativity. And there's a little negativity with this whole uh, lemonade, with some shit Not her, by the way, what's some shit is bond.com. We are not talking about her. So please, I do not want her fans. Mm-hmm. We do not want her fans to send us hate poetry. <laughs> all right? <laughs> A diss track. <laughs> no, I don't want that. We love her. She's absolutely amazing. Yes. She's been in the game way before Lemonade. Make yeah. that very clear. Yes. So here's here's the the the, the beef. All right. So Wesson Shire was born in Kenya. Her parents are both Somali, and she was raised in London, UK. Obviously, when Lemonade came out, there's a lot of articles about her, and some of the articles are either claiming that she is Kenyan, period, mm-hmm. or conveniently forget to mention that she is Somali. So, my question to you guys is, do you feel like sometimes when positivity or there's an ep- somebody does something very epic or succeeding in the world, the media sometimes forgets to say that they're Somali, and when there's negativity, like, you know, Ahmed, Mohammed, blew up such and such, he's a Somali refugee, right in the title of the, art- the article. What's your take on that? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, uh, it's all phrasing. Like, whatever, I guess, um, medium is used to describe the story, it's always going to be in the tone of who's in charge. Mm. So, I mean, it'll be it'll be in someone's favor to kind of badmouth Somali for some right. people, right? So they'll always kind of paint us in a bad light right. and make sure that people know that it's a Somali guy doing dirt. But if it's doing something good, then it's just, ah, it's just the person who's doing yeah. this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what do you guys think? Who well, else? it's building a narrative, right? Because there is a negative narrative 
towards like Somali people okay. in general. Mm-hmm. So to accredit Western Shire as Somali would be going against the narrative that they're creating already. Right. So it's not a shock. I don't think it, we should be shocked about it. And this is like an ongoing thing. By the way, in 2013, Mohammed Farah, a.k.a. Mo Farah, that's how the community, I mean, the media likes to say Mo Farah, he was a uh, the Olympic double gold champion. Um, and so in 2013, OurBusiness.com, let me, I have it in my notes here, OurBusiness.com wrote an article that said he was one of the most influential Arabs. <laughs> not Somali, not any, like, not African, like, literally Arab. And this is like, and by the way, the list is like full of like people from Saudi Arabia, from Yemen, like, but this guy's the only Somali and he's the most influential Arab. So this is like an ongoing thing that, that media tends to do. I just want to know, like, is this, how does that make you guys feel? Well, media people are dumb, like, and people- I'm sorry, what? <clears throat> media people are dumb. Okay, go. Cool. Because- yeah, all right. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> no, because if you look at it, even in like the Canadian census, right? right. When you're filling out like uh, like Somali is not considered under uh, like um, an ethnic group under Africa. We're under Southeast Asian. Yeah. So it's under that uh, like um, it's understood mm-hmm. that Somali people are Arab mm. only because of the fact of quote unquote the way that we look. Our hair, our facial structure, and how we're how we're built, right? right? And I think it's just I don't know. Call me a conspiracy theorist, but I think it's just another way to like conquer and divide. But I think in the Waterston case, like I think it's just lazy journalism. Like you know what I mean? People, when you when you say like where is somebody from, <clears throat> the most they go is where were they born, and that's probably where they're picking it up. And I don't know where Mohammed Farah was born. Maybe he was mm-hmm. born in Saudi, and that's why they say he's the most influential. But to me, it's it's lazy media, but at the same time, media, ethnicity sells in media, right? So they don't want to just be like, what is Shire poet? They want to attach some sort of ethnicity. They do a five minute Google search. Oh, she was born in Kenya. Boom, she's Kenyan, right? Mm-hmm. And it's the same sort of thing when bad things happen in the news, Somali people, it's the same thing. It's the same five minutes of research. Right. It's just in that case, the person was born in Somalia and they were just lucky. You know what I mean? Person yeah, yeah. was born in Somalia, they're, they're Somalian. So I think it's, the, the media is, is is lazy, and I do think the media tries to sell, like, ethnicity. Same thing when, like, a black person commits a crime. Right. Why do you have to say it was a black male, right? Yeah. Like, it was a male. Like they, a male. They, they like to associate with that because it adds to the story it's being vivid. In this case, right. I think it was just lazy journalism where they, yeah. she was born there. Because didn't say anything, by the way. I just want to make that very yeah. clear. I don't want people coming after us. Watson did not put a, a statement out saying, I am such and such and such. This is just... For the most part, by the way, people got it right. But for some articles, like we noticed, we're like, whoa, what? It's same with, like I said, the Mo Farah situation that, that, again, most influential. And going back to what you said, he was born in his Wikipedia page, it says he was born in Hamad. But mm-hmm. in one of his one of his races, when he won, he had the Somali flag like wrapped around him. Right. To me, you're all this like to me is like Somali, Somali line, like you're all, all of us are just Somali. Like yeah. I don't, I don't like to do that whole. You know. But I was going to say, in the community, this should reinforce, like, any time, like, as much as you do positive and negative things, yeah. like, e- whether it's positive or negative, they're going to try and associate your ethnicity to it, right? right. Positive or negative, mm-hmm. so you got to be cognizant of that. Like, I know last time we were talking about the things that were happening in Minnesota, same sort of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You associate the Somali with it, the media is going to run with it, and it just reinforces yeah. stereotypes. So if you, if you did something really positive, negative or positive, no, we're going to say positive, all right? I don't want to say that you guys shot up anything, yeah. all right? Um, <laughs> How would you know? I didn't. <laughs> I, mean, I was gonna say something about you, and I was like, "Nah, I don't, I'm gonna say it after this show." But let's just say you did something really positive. You saved a life, and you wrote a book about it. All right, like, what do you? Because each one of you guys, I think, were either born in Somalia, right? Uh, we had this discussion earlier, or or somewhere outside of Somalia. What do you want to be recognized? Like Iman, what do you want people to say? You want Iman, Somali Canadian, Somali Canadian. Yeah. That's how you would identify yeah. yourself. And where were you born? Somalia. In Somalia. Yeah. Who was born outside of Somalia? <laughs> All right. So, Bueller, where were you born? I was born in New Delhi, India. All right. Where? Which I believe you, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I was lying, guys. Yeah, I but really did. I, I was born a month early. We, so is it we Samosa? travelers. Is it yeah. Samosa or Sambusa? Yeah. Is it a Samosa or is it a Sambusa? I was there briefly, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Very brief stint. Yeah. Chinese, yeah. So would you identify like yourself? So it would be Bueller? Somali. Somali. Somali Canadian, yeah. That's my passport says... Mm-hmm. We was diplomats. Did you say right? I'm not a Canadian? I said I am Canadian. Oh. But we was diplomats when I was born. Yeah. So wherever I was born, I'd be considered someone that could have been born anywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay. We so it's diplomats. your citizenship and your ethnicity that you identify with. Yeah. Correct? Mm-hmm. Do I get that right? Or mm-hmm. does anybody is, is you guys are from, from where? Toronto? Yeah, born in Toronto. Toronto? Yeah. What about you? 
Toronto. So you would both say that Somali Canadian? Yeah. Yes, but so then more likely Somali before I would say attached Canadian though. Really? Yeah. Why? Just because Canadians don't consider me Canadian, so why would I want to?